Hello and welcome back. Eddie Rodasovich, George Stoya here from Owen Field. Oklahoma wins. They cover 34-19, the uh, final score today. And uh, uh, some good, some bad, some really bad. But all in all, they do win by 15. They get out of there. Our Mason Thomas, we'll talk about him here in a little bit. But let's just start offensively. Obviously, we've talked a lot, of, uh, talked a lot about it here on the Soonerscoop.com YouTube channel. But uh, what would you think? Jackson Arnold? Did a lot with his legs today, maybe a little bit cleaner. First half, really good. Third quarter, not so much. I think that uh, Jackson played pretty good. I mean, other than the the pick six, I thought that he made a lot of really good plays. Uh, <clears throat> he was really good in the RPO game today. They took away some of the RPO stuff today, which I thought was interesting. Did some zone read, knew when to keep it, had the big you know 47-yard run. And then the play at the end of the game, uh, that's, just a, that's just a kid making a play, um, you know, scrambling on third and 11, uh, going and scoring a touchdown and what ended up really kind of being the game ceiling score. So, um, you know, I, I thought he played okay. I thought, he, you know, look, the passing game just isn't there right now. Um, I think a large part of that is they just don't have the playmakers at receiver. Teams are daring them to run the football. They ran the ball well in the first half. Look, I, Eddie, if they, if they play like they did offensively in the first half and what they did defensively other than the, last, the final drive, this is a team that can win a lot of football games. Uh, they, they controlled the clock. They went on long, long drives. They ran the football well. They were running, you know, th third and short. Um, you know, it, it was it was an offense that you're like, okay, like maybe they they've got something here. And then they regressed in the second half. You know, Brent talked about it. Even the opening drive of the second half, I thought was a good drive. Stalls and they have to kick a field goal, but. You know, you go up, uh, what was that, 24-6 to 6 at that point. You're right. feeling, still feeling really good about what you're doing. But uh, I think that it, it's getting rid of those those three and outs, those quick possessions that uh, you got nothing going. You're not running the clock very much. I thought that the, the time management, clock management wasn't great uh, tonight. Obviously, the delay of game penalty on the, the field goal try as well. But, uh, look, I think the offense took, took the right step. And what I say last week, I said, hey, look, if the offense can score around 30 to 40 points, you're going to win a lot of football games. And that was the case. I thought the defense played great for the most part other than two drives, um, which, you know, they got they got some bad breaks on, on some penalty calls too as well on those. But um, I think overall you get away with the win, Eddie, and uh, you feel a little bit better maybe going into Tennessee. I know that it's going to be a tough challenge for Oklahoma. I'm not picking them to win that game. But uh, I think that they got a lot of issues up front. But you still, you know, you feel a little better, I think. A you little do. better. You, you do feel a little bit better. Jackson Arnold, 18-29, 169 yards. Had the one interception, the pick six there in the third quarter that really made things kind of tight. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's talk Oklahoma rush game, though. They, they did run the ball well today, 182 yards on the ground, 214 overall. Obviously, get how some of that. that uh, how much of those rushing yards was Jackson Arnold? Jackson Arnold ended up with 14 carries for 97 yards. He ended up with 118 gain, net 97, two touchdowns. They did a lot, though, through the run game. I thought that if you're going to say anything about this offense, it felt like they took a little bit of a step. And did that coincide with Heath Ozeda playing a lot today at left guard? They moved uh, Jacob Sexton out. What do you think just overall from a uh, offensive line standpoint and kind of marrying that with the run game? Yeah, I thought they ran the ball a little better. They definitely had a, a few more explosive runs, and I think part of that was the quarterback run game really opened some things up. They ran some stuff in the quarterback run game that we just haven't seen yet from Oklahoma. And Seth Luttrell said after the game, said, look, I didn't want to you know, get, go into my bag that far yet and, and run the quarterback as much as we did today. We were going to at some point this season, but the way the offense is operating right now, you absolutely have to, you know, pull out, you know, basically find anything that you can find success <laughs> right. with. And uh, right now, that's the quarterback run game. And so uh, I thought that Jackson did a really good job with that. Uh, I thought the offensive line blocked those type of plays really well. They still can't get some things going with the running backs. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's running backs not seeing the hole. Like Gavin Sochik still really hasn't done a whole lot. I think Taylor I he ran the ball hard today. He talking did. about Gavin. I, I think Taylor Tatum's the best running back. I do. And part of the problem with playing Taylor, though, he makes a lot of mental mistakes, especially when uh, maybe Jackson keeps it or it's a pass protection situation like the pick six. I don't know if that was a Tatum issue or, or I don't even know if Tatum was the back in there, but they definitely missed a protection on that, the pick six, as well as a couple other sacks given up. So I think that that's the hesitation with playing Tatum more, but he certainly has the most juice. So I'm interested to see if they let him loose a little bit more. I thought the two back set with him and Barnes was really successful on the one drive early in the first half. So um, I think that it was better, but mostly because Eddie, instead of getting, you know, just two yards, 
per carry on a few of those first down runs, they're getting three or four. And I know that sounds like that's not that much more. It's a big difference because, you know, John Summerall, the Tulane coach, said after the game uh, that, you know, Oklahoma early in the game was putting them in, you know, third and short. And he goes, I don't have any call on defense to stop what they're doing on third and short. And so Oklahoma has to continue to get into those situations instead of the ones where late in the game they're they're facing third and 10, third and 11, uh, and it's going to be really hard for them to convert those. Defensively, uh, you did speak with or you went into the uh, John Sarmarell press conference. I know that he was very complimentary of Oklahoma defensively. We had talked about, uh, you know, here on the YouTube show as well as, uh, you know, I think everywhere else, the podcast and everything. The defense was going to be tested. This was a Tulane team that uh, Darian Mensa had kind of come out of nowhere as a starting quarterback. They did pretty damn good. If if you were looking for Oklahoma defensively to not necessarily make a statement today, but take that next step as a unit, I thought they did that today. Danny Stutzman with another phenomenal game. Uh, Our Mason Thomas really arrived, it looked like, there in the fourth quarter. Stop asking me about him in the mailbag. Is, Stop, I know who you are. Stop asking about him in the mailbag because every week it's been all Mason Thomas, all this hype. The dude is is good. He's yeah. I think he's their best pass rusher. He's been so close, and he finally got there today, and he he took over the game. Yeah. And and I know the game was, you know, maybe not totally out of reach. I mean, there's six minutes left, and it's a, still a two score game, and he just took over that one defensive series. Then he gets the strip sack at the end of the game. I mean. The guy's a monster, and when you can have somebody on the edge that you don't have to bring an extra sure. pressure to get to the quarterback, you have a guy that can just go get him, uh, it makes a huge difference, and they, they need him to play like that next week. What did you think of just in terms of overall defensively today? They had a couple lapses there at the yep. end of the first half. It's happened two weeks in a row, but outside of that, another day in which, you know, even with throughout the struggles there in the third quarter and the fourth quarter at the beginning, uh, offensively, it just felt like this is a defense you can run out there now, and it's like everything's going to be okay. They're really good against the run, uh, really, really good against the run. I know that Tulane runs some some interesting run concepts. They're really good at the outside zone blocking, and they got Oklahoma a few times on some you know uh, big runs, but they were really, really solid there. They made that young quarterback have to throw the ball and move around in the pocket. Um, And and they, you know, it was interesting, Eddie, it felt like they were getting so close to sacking him in the first half and even in the third quarter, and they just couldn't get there. And then they finally warmed down and got there, uh, you know, in in the fourth quarter. And they they were running some interesting, I don't know if you noticed it, they were running some interesting formations on the obvious passing downs where, you know, you've got R. Mason Thomas, Trace Ford, P.J. Atabarway, and Grayson Halton all up there. Danny Stutzman walks up and they're bringing him. They're bringing everybody, and it's 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 an interesting group. And I wonder if that's something that can throw some defenses off. But uh, had some trouble on the, the long crossing routes. That's going to happen. You know, I thought with Kendall Dolby out today, some of the communication with the Cheetah wasn't always as sound as they probably would like. Uh, Woody Washington played there a lot today. Samuel Masigo, Jaron Kanick came in and played some Cheetah as well. Um, and so I think you want to you want to clean up some of that communication um, at that Cheetah spot. But I, I think Kendall Dolby will be back next sure. week. Um, you know, he's dealing with a concussion. I know Brent said after the game they were hopeful he was maybe going to get to go today. Didn't get to go. So uh, I think that, that, that'll clean itself up. But, yeah, this defense is for real. Now, are they an elite defense that they're going to hold Tennessee next week to 19 no. points? Probably not. But uh, I do think they can keep you in the game. And, and they continue to create turnovers in big moments. Sure. Uh, you know, the, the play today, Kenai Walker tips it. Kobe McKenzie tips it. Billy Bowman ends up with the interception that obviously goes on to set up the the you know game ceiling touchdown from Jackson Arnold a few plays later. So uh, you love that from your defense, right? They're coming up with the big plays when they absolutely have to have it. And I get it. Uh, you know, everybody said that against Temple and Houston doesn't matter. Those teams aren't any good. Tulane's a good football team. Yeah. Uh, that's a good offense. They've got a lot of really good playmakers. They held Mario Williams in check today. Uh, Makai Hughes didn't really do a whole lot in the running game for him. And that young quarterback, I, I, I think that they forced him into some bad mistakes. So now we turn to uh, one of the big ones. I mean, obviously, I think ESPN game day is going to be here next yep. week. The eyes of the college football world as Oklahoma enters the SEC for real now. Uh, it's here. Like the Tennessee week is here. There was a lot of talk with some of the players after the game, just in terms of this is kind of one of those weeks that I think when you sign up a letter of intent, that's why you come to Oklahoma to play in these types of games. You feel better, worse about kind of just overall standing with this group as they now go into the uh, the Big Tennessee game at three and zero. I think better because you saw it. You saw it in the first half what this offense can maybe look like, and that's without some of their best pieces, sure. right? What if they get back a Nick Anderson next week, which I would anticipate him playing next week. We saw him go through warmups today. 
I thought he was going to play today the way he was going through warm-ups, and then he ends up not playing. I think he'll play. Maybe that helps you a lot. Offensive line, maybe you get Branson Hickman back. I think that that's still the heart of the issue for this offense is the center position when you talk about you know not picking up blitzes, the protection issues tonight. I think that's somewhat on calls, not getting the calls right in terms of who's picking up who on protection uh, and also having to play some young guys. I mean, you look out there and they're playing you know, redshirt freshmen at center, at guard, and then you've got Jacob Sexton over at left tackle. You've got uh, you know, Fabechi Wiwu, who's never played at this level at right guard. Michael Tarquin's really the only guy that's, um, you know, really experienced at this, and he's, he's been playing really well. But um, I think you do feel a little bit better. Again, I'm not picking Oklahoma to beat Tennessee. Do I think they can hang around? Definitely. I, I think this crowd needs to bring it. I'm not going to call anybody out today. It was hot. It was hot as hell. I don't blame anybody. It was 21 to nothing at one yeah. point. I don't blame anybody for leaving, especially the students. Go get your drink on. I don't blame you. Uh, but – Next week, fans got to bring it. This atmosphere has got to bring it. You saw what, you know, South Carolina ended up losing today. But I think a large part of, uh, you know, why they were able to hang around with a, an LSU team was kind of the atmosphere. And so sure. uh, I'm excited to see what that looks like. But in terms of the team play, I do think that they can hang around. They got to be able to protect. They got to be able to scheme up some stuff offensively to get the ball out of Jackson's hands quickly. Because if Tulane can get after Jackson Arnold, you, you can bet your ass that <laughs> Tennessee is going to be able to be able to get after him. It's going to be a fun week here in Norman as uh, they get ready for the big Tennessee game coming up this weekend or I guess next weekend, yep. uh, really. But Oklahoma does win 34 to 19 today. They moved to three and zero, and this is it's here. The SEC is here, and it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So for George Stoya, I'm Eddie Radosovich. We'll see you all week on the SoonerScoop.com YouTube channel.